Hey guys, want to do a quick video on how I like to find levels. And so I'm going to mo mainly be going over how I find levels using the market profile and the volume profile and then some blank charts to find some targets. So I'm going to start off here with the market profile and I'm going to draw out the concept here on paint. So market profile, people often use MP for market profile. Um, we're going to be using the market profile through looking through the lens of auction market theory. And so in auction market theory, we are either always we are either in balance, in balance, balance, imbalance, etc. So we're always going between balance and then we have areas of imbalance and then we go back to balance again, etc. So these balance areas that we create and these past balance areas can often become very important, especially the more days that we spend in a balance when we're creating a balance area, the more important it's gonna be going forward. So in those balance areas, we are ranging and the profile that it creates will often look like a D shape. So if it'll be shaped like this, we'll have a point of control near the center and then we will have a taper on both ends where the time is the time spent at these ends is very few and then we'll have a balance area high and a balance area low so for this the balance area high and low is going to be the most important part because that's how we are going to find our levels and that's what we're going to trade off of and they can be used very simply they are very much so just like a range playing a breakout or playing a return into the range. So let's say I extend these and there's two different things that can happen. We can either be inside, we break out and retest, or we can come from outside of the balance area, break back into it, retest, and then we'll want to target the other side of the range. Same thing if we're coming from the bottom, break back into the balance area, retest that balance area low, and then we want to target the other side of the balance or the balance area high. So I'm going to go into the chart and show you what I mean by this. So I'm going to open up Sierra chart, go to my market profile, and as you can see, I have these already drawn. I'm going to delete them just to show you from scratch. Um, so you can see right here, I have this composite profile. And so this is multiple days, but I'm gonna undo these merges that I have on this profile. And as you can see, we have multiple days where we're kind of in the same range. And so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna create a composite profile by merging these. And that will also create a composite balance area high and low. And so once I have this, we got that good D shape, taper at both ends, and then we have that point of control. We're gonna go up into tools, extending rectangle, and then we're gonna draw from the high to the low. And let me adjust that top one a little bit. I think it's a little bit higher right there. And so then this, these levels going forward can be very important. And then I kind of did the same thing here. I created this composite profile and so you can see we have confluence here at this balance area high, which is around 95. And so you can go in, start merging profiles, finding balance areas, and then putting this um, extending rectangle on it and using those levels for future reactions. Um, but for the context of today, let's go in and see how this would have played out. So we had CPI, so obviously it would have been very difficult to get in around here. Um, but for the context, we rejected this balance area high, but then we broke out and we had a good retest, which I was able to trade today right here. So we had that. And then you could just use these kind of as normal levels. 
Um, we don't really have an inherent target if we're breaking out of the balance area, but if we're breaking back in, we target the other side of that range. So that's how you like to use market profile. And now I'm gonna show you um, volume profile and what I like to do with volume profile. So on the volume profile, I like to look for two different things. I either like to look for low volume nodes or ledges. So a low volume node example would be, we have this profile and then we have this area where there's little to no volume right here. Okay, that's kind of garbage, but these low volume nodes often create good areas of um, reaction. And so what I like to do is I like to play these just like a normal level break where we break back down. And then I like to use that and that's kind of the, a good entry location. And then the next concept would be a ledge. So what a ledge is, is essentially it's kind of where we have a horizontal area of volume. So in this example, this would be a ledge and this would also be a ledge where we have that protruding volume. It's nearly horizontal and those can also be good levels for reaction. So I'm gonna go here to Sierra chart and let's go to this chart, which I have on, I believe the four hour. So to find levels here, we're gonna be looking for those low volume nodes. One example would be right here where we have, as you can see, I'm gonna move my cursor away. We have like no volume in between those profiles right there. This can be a level right here would also be a good level. And then you can also see down here, we have a low volume node here, here. So these are some of the levels that I would probably play around. And then you can see we have a ledge right here at 95. And that provides some good confluence with our market profile. We have this huge ledge where the volume is nearly horizontal. And then we can use that level going forward. And you can see we have we can put a lot of levels on here, um, but I will mostly want to put the bigger levels of interest. So you can see we kind of have a low volume node in there. We could put one here and you can do that how you like. So those are some of the ways I like to find levels. And then one way that I like to find targets is I look for um, equal highs or equal lows or relative equal highs, relative equal lows. And I'll kind of draw out what that means. So equal highs, pretty self-explanatory, equal lows, same thing. Relative equal highs is where we have nearly the same high, but usually there's a slight angle. Same thing with the low. Let's say we have like that. These are levels I like to use for targets and on the profile, from a profile perspective, these will often be poor highs or poor lows. So I'm gonna go to here and you can see, let's start trying to find relative equal highs or relative equal lows to target. So if for example, we played that breakout of 95, our target, we're gonna wanna look for equal relative equal highs or equal highs. And as you can see right here, we kind of have that and even possibly, yeah, like there, we have these highs. Same thing would go down here. These would be the relative equal lows that we'd wanna target. And same thing right here with these lows at 53 if we are bearish. And so in the future, we can start targeting things like this where we kind of have this poor high look. We have all these highs that are relatively equal and on a bigger um, time frame, you can see this happen a lot. So I'm gonna go and change my chart so that it is a continuous contract, just so things are a little bit clearer. And I'll show you on the daily, some of these targets and how well they work, where we have those equal highs or equal lows, and then we go and we take it out.
All right, now that we have that loaded, let's go and look for some equal highs and equal lows. So here's a good example. We have these equal high. We take that out and then we often can reverse after. And that's why I like these as targets. I don't always trust that we're gonna break that level and flip it and keep going. And I don't necessarily try to use technical analysis levels too much where we have like equal highs or equal lows. I like to enter mostly at those um, balance area highs or lows, ledges or low volume nodes. And then I like to use these as targets. If we break that and we look really good and the tape is good, then I may hold more runners, but those are often my targets. And as you can kind of see down here, these equal lows could also provide a target. If you are shorting, let's say you short up here, you're gonna target these equal lows. We take it out and we reverse. And that's about it. Um, another day I may go into more about the footprint or the DOM and how to find levels using those. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave it at this.